sitting down with me today, Don. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. You're a recent recipient of the NAPB's Plant Breeding Impact Award. Congratulations. Your breeding has had a huge impact on the corn world, to say the least. Before we get to that, though, who's Don Bockelman? What's something that maybe people don't know about you? Can you give me a, a snapshot of yourself personally? Uh, I would describe myself as a simple man. Um, I value family, friends, uh, um, honesty, integrity. Um, I uh, think that I, I think that a lot of who you are is is uh, determined probably in your first 20 years of life. So um, I was born in southeast Kansas. Uh, I was very fortunate to have good parents. And um, so that's probably a, a lot who I am. My dad was a very hardworking guy. Uh, I think that, that he instilled that in me. And... Uh, uh, I'm I'm very proud of. I have three sons that I'm very proud of, and six grandchildren, and and uh, uh, that's kind of uh, I'm, I'm in heaven when I'm with with the kids and enjoy that. Um, I think too, uh, growing up, I was pretty active in in sports. Uh, I think that made me pretty competitive, so that helped me in my career. I was always uh, wanting to. Do, to excel and do well, so and I think that's needed, and uh, so I created. You know, I had a passion for uh, acquired a passion for corn breeding, so that's kind of where my life led me. How did you acquire that passion? How did that happen? You know, it, it really was somewhat by chance. Um, I I uh, was hired uh, uh, by. Uh, as a research assistant uh, with uh, Dr. Larry Claflin at Kansas State University. So uh, at the time, um, there was a couple uh, new corn diseases that were was appearing in Kansas and Nebraska, Goss's well, and corn leaf on necrosis. So I was hired as a full-time research assistant, and then I was able to work on a master's degree. And during that process, we were evaluating a lot of commercial hybrids in uh, in at the university for for uh, different companies, so I was able to gain some contacts through that, and uh, through that I was hired uh, by a small seed company, Olds Gold Seed Company, and uh, really kind of as a pathologist, but as a pathologist um, slash breeding with some breeding responsibilities. So when I started breeding corn in that small program. Uh, you know, it just, it, it felt right. You know, I just uh, really enjoyed that. So I would say that's how, how the passion uh, was created. And then later on in my career, uh, we had a uh, business in Mexico with Asgro and I visit, visited there. Uh, and that's really where my passion for germplasm breeding, because that was a lot of my emphasis was with uh, diversity breeding. So <clears throat> the the passion of the Mexican breeders was contagious. And, uh, you know, it's kind of, that's kind of the path that I knew I wanted to go down if I, I had the option to do so. Well, it's almost 40 years, four decades you've been in this industry. What's the biggest change you've seen in that time? There's been a lot of change. So uh, I would say, my career kind of had, had three parts. One with a very small seed company, or a very small but successful seed company. Um, and, and then um, that company was purchased by Asgro, and at that time things grew. During that period, the big changes were uh, new technology and, and computers. Uh, that changed everything, really. Uh, personal computers, computing power. I mean, that was that that really was probably the biggest uh, advancement of that time. So that allowed us to collect data different ways. 
improve the uh, combines and, and uh, research planters that made a big impact on the volume of, of yield trials and, and nurseries that you could plant. Uh, later, um, the last 20 years of my career, those were really where the biggest advancements were made. Uh, the beginning of uh, marker-assisted breeding, um, being able to uh, correlate uh, uh, the chromosome pattern within within plants to phenotypes, and then use that uh, to breed uh, more effectively. A long career. You've done a lot in your career. What's your fondest memory? Well, I, I think one uh, one of my achievements was in 2014. One of the hybrids that I had a uh, uh, helped uh, develop uh, won the national corn growers contest. It was a world record that year of 503 bushels. So that was very exciting. My dad was really proud of me. So that that meant a lot to me as well. Um, probably the other things that I recall really fondly are having conversation with, conversations with other breeders in the field, um, you know, viewing different germplasm and things like that. Uh, uh, one of my mentors was Walter Travis and just an incredible knowledge. He probably bred uh, corn or was a manager in, in almost every region of the world. And, and you'd, you'd stand in front of the plots and you'd start talking about germplasm and just trying to soak up everything, his knowledge. And later, you know, I, I wanted to return that to, to younger breeders. So there was a lot of interaction in the field. And I really enjoyed that, being able to uh, talk about germplasm, talk about corn breeding. And a lot of times that happened in the field. So. And you were at Monsanto for a lot of years. Monsanto, of course, is part of Bayer now. There's been a lot of consolidations in the industry. So a, lot, a lot's changed in the, in the seed industry and in plant breeding. But have breeders changed at all? And if so, how? And, and if not, what, what keeps them so steady? I would say they're a lot smarter than... <laughs> than the, well, I... Maybe I'll say that with reservation because there's a lot of smart people uh, during my career that made some of those things possible. But uh, just some of the uh, technology that they've been trained in uh, is is incredible. And some of the projects that we're working on uh, in graduate school. So that, that flows over into the industry, that knowledge. Um, they, you know, I never had a computer when I was five years old, so all that comes natural. You know, analytics uh, probably comes more natural to to some of those younger folks, and uh, so and they're in an age where innovation is is the game, and so uh, they're very well versed in that and uh, knowledgeable. So. John, we're here in Pine Mountain, Georgia, for the 2019 meeting of the National Association of Plant Breeders. There's a lot of young people here, up and coming plant breeders, just starting their career. How does winning this award and being a part of the NAPB, how does that help you in your life now that you're retired? How does it help you to impart some of these lessons you've learned over the years on to these younger people? One thing about the, the, this organization is is uh, that it's there's a wide range of crops. It's just amazing that uh, there's so many different topics, and all crop breeding is is obviously different. And uh, and when you come here and and talk to other people, you 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 can experience uh, different breeding methods. You know, different crops, uh, and, and that's one thing that is really cool about this organization, I think. Um, and there's a lot of opportunity for exchange of ideas. Um, you go to poster, poster sessions and, you know, listen to the graduate students and their passion. And, and uh, it, it's really a, a good opportunity for uh, information exchange and communication, uh, finding new contacts, uh, uh, things like that. So.
Thank you so much, Don, for sitting down with me today. You're welcome very much. Thanks for having me.